So hi, hello once again, but good evening. Welcome back to the session, everyone. This is your mentor Kapilin. So in this session, I will be seeing the continuation for the reading comprehension and hopefully the last video, last session for the reading comprehension. Okay. With that, uh, in the next classes, we'll be planning according to the um, topic which has been uncovered. Okay. So before getting into the session, let me just quickly introduce about myself. My name is Kapilin. I'm a mechanical engineer with three years of teaching experience in the field of management exams. I've also converted various Indian Institute of Management. And also, if you personally like my videos and stuff, kindly don't forget to follow me on Uncademy Learning app. This is my user ID, Kapil Master, where you'll be seeing all my exclusive special class videos I've made here. Okay. And also, um, do not forget to like, share, and subscribe to my YouTube channel, Cat for MBA and also a telegram channel that's at mba okay so talking about the unacademy subscription plus that is for one year and two years you can use my discount code of kabi10 where you'll be getting an absolute 10 percent off so that the final price for one year it's going to be 15,750, and for two years it is 18,900. okay and uh, yeah So only last few days are left to um, you know enjoy the privilege of 10% discount for the cap plus subscription. So again, better not delay, weekly subscribe it and start learning. So we have the weekly scholarship test happening every week on Unacademy Combat Challenge. So it is happening on the 21st of Feb this month, the time exactly at 12 pm. So you can register now free by using my code of KBI10. And uh, if you're a top out of 100, you can win exciting scholarships, which is up to 20 plus, 28 plus lakhs. And most importantly, the leaderboard, it is All India Live Leaderboard. Okay, so you can literally check where you stand exactly. And that would be very great for calculating your percentile as well. And uh, most importantly, you can identify and improve your weak areas. You know, that, that will be provided from our side with a detailed video solutions. And also the questions will also be curated by the experts. Okay, so definitely it will be a um, you know game changer from your side if you attend the Unacademy Combat Challenge. And uh, yes, so here we have the testimonials for TAP No Cap 2020 with flying colors with absolute 99 percentile. And if you aspire to be one for the next year, you can start enrolling in our batches. That is on the 19th of Feb, we have the final registration batch for MASCET and that is Maharashtra Common Entrance Test and for 22nd of Feb, it's going to be the Striker batch for CAT 2021 and for 23rd Feb, it's going to be quantitative genius batch for CAT 2021, okay. So here we have the batches starting from the respective dates of 19th, 22nd and 23rd, so we can easily have a check and better not delay we'll quickly get into the very first set of today's session of reading comprehension okay so i think in this session i have a little bit enlarged the font size so that it will not be a visible problem for many Yeah, so here we have and uh, we have a continuation as well. Okay, we have a two slides long passage. So after completing the first uh, slide, I'll switch over for the next one. So come on, go for it. And most importantly, guys, as we have did two classes on reading comprehension, I hope you guys are doing good with it. And most importantly, what you need to remember is the crucial part is trying to Go for a fast speed along with getting all the data as a head. So that's a real challenging part when it comes to reading comprehension. And that we can able to tackle, you know, by, you know, by the, practically by the usage of reading newspapers. That's what I told you. And most importantly, the editorial part, which will be provided in the newspapers, especially in the Hindu English version. If you see, definitely we'll be having a lot of editorials. So try to go for a read 
that will in turn improve your general knowledge as well as your reading ability okay so that's really important make sure you practice reading regularly if you live a gap no definitely it would not help you at the time of your exam so hardly have 30 days okay hardly a month you have so definitely if you start doing it by now at the end of 30th day at the time of your exam definitely i would say you can you can able to crack it much better okay So we have John Maynard, Maynard Keynes, the trendiest dead economist of this apocalyptic moment, was the godfather of government stimulus. And Keynes had the radical idea that throwing money at recessions through aggressive deficit spending would re elucidate flat line economies. And he wasn't too particular about where the money was thrown. And in the depths of depression, he suggested that the treasury could fill old bottles with banknotes, bury them at suitable depths in disused coal mines, then sit back and watch money mining create jobs and prosperity. So it would indeed be more sensible to build houses and the like, you know, but the above would be better than nothing. As President elect Barack Obama prepares to throw money at the current downturn, a stimulus package starting at above $800 billion plus the second $350 billion chunk of the financial bailout. We all really do seem to be Canadians now. Just about every expert agrees that pumping up $1 trillion into more and more economy will rev up the ethereal goods and services engine that Canadians called aggregate demand and stimulate at least some short term activity even if it is all based on money pits. But Keynes was also right that there would be more sensible ways to spend it. There would also be less sensible ways to spend it. A trillion dollars worth of bad ideas for all inducing highways and bridges to nowhere, ethanol plants and pipelines that accelerate global warming, tax breaks for over-liberated, McMansion building, you know, builders and burdens of new long-term federal entitlements would be worse than mere waste. So it would be smarter to buy every American an iPod, a set of Jinsu knives and 600 subway food longs. It would be smarter still to throw all the money and things we need to do away, which is the goal of Obama's upcoming American recovery and reinvestment plan. And it will include a mix of tax cuts, aid to really good state and local governments and spending to address needs ranging from food stamps to computerized health records to bridge repairs to broadband network to energy efficient profits all designed to save or create 3 million to 4 million jobs by the end of 2010 obama has said speed is high priority because of the faster washington injects cash into the financial bloodstream the better it stands to help avoid a multi-year slump with double digit unemployment and deflation but he also wants to use the similar to advance his long-term priorities reducing energy use and carbon emissions cutting middle tax class taxes and upgrading neglected infrastructure reining in healthcare costs and eventually reducing the budget deficit that exploded under george bush and obama's goal is to exploit this crisis in the best best scene of the world Start pursuing his vision of a greener, fairer, more competitive, more exploited, sustainable economy. 
Unfortunately, while the 21st century Washington has demonstrated an impressive ability to, stand, to spend one quickly, it has yet to prove that it can spend money wisely. And the sum of a one with 12 zeros is already creating a feeling frenzy of the ages. Lobbyists for shoe companies, zoos, catfish farmers, mall owners, airlines, public broadcast, broadcasters, car dealers, and everyone who can afford their leisure are lining up for a piece of stimulus. States that embark on request spending and tax outing sprees when they were flushed or begging for pay bailouts now and that they were broken. And politicians were dusting off their unfunded monster museums, water slides, and other pet projects for rebranding as novel ready infrastructure and investments. And Obama's aid scrambled to assemble something effective and transformative as well. As politically achievable, they acknowledge the tension between his desire for speed and reform. Okay, so they are talking about the uh, innovative ideas of injecting money into the economy by Obama, Barack Obama, and his plans for uh, making you know the country is vision greener, fairer, more competitive, and more sustainable economy. So these are the plans given. And uh, so you have a lengthy long passage here. So definitely we need to summarize this, get some old some idea out of it. After doing so, we need to blindly enter into the questions part. Okay. We'll go for it. Yeah. See, first of all, you need to break this passage in a chunk of small, small paragraphs. Okay, you need to break it in chunks, and after that, you need to compile all together. Okay, so when we go for addressing the question, let's say this is your first question, that is Obama's upcoming American Recovery and Reinvestment Plan focuses on which of the following. Okay, so this plan for recovery and reinvestment, it focuses on what? You have three options given for you. That is the first one, a recovery of all debts from the debtors in a paced manner, pumping money very liberally in projects that are mandatory, and investing money recklessly in any project regardless of its utility. Okay, so if that is the case, come on, just uh, go for the option which would which would be flexible and which is more relevant to the context of the given passage. Come on, guys. <laughs> so what would be the exact option for the very first one? If you want again, I will just quickly display you, quickly have a brush up. After that, come back to the very first one. Come on. So they are talking about the Obama's plan here. So as they have mentioned here, if you try to address the last part of this paragraph, that is, it would be, his plan is it would be more smarter still to throw all that money at things we need to do anyway. Yeah, that is, they are talking about the mandatory things, which is the goal of Obama's upcoming American recovery and reinvestment plan. So if you see this, then I would say the most flexible option for the given question, that is the plan for American recovery and reinvestment, is option B actually, only B. So it's been nowhere mentioned here. And this has been mentioned, that is pumping more money very liberally in projects that are mandatory. That's what the underlying statement contextually means, okay? So definitely, for the very first one, option B is the right answer. Okay. All good. We'll go for the next one. Come on. And if you have got any answers for the given respective questions, you can kindly let me know in the live chat so that I can able to address it. Yeah. 
Don't be hesitant. Kindly do you know, show your needful participation, guys. Come on. Lively arrow or premium if you have any uh, current options which you have got. Paragama live chat the very tomb so that I can able to acknowledge. Come on. See, one thing I want to tell you, definitely to be very frank. Um see, uh, reading comprehension is a big on a topic. Tha. Poor and equal topic tha, for the beginners and option. Okay, if you're, if you're the person who just spent only two or three months for preparation of transit, definitely if you're starting up as a beginner, it is a vague topic only. I agree with you, but in and somehow we need to score marks in it. So, on the Uru Karan the Kaga, we need to attend the session that we need to, you know, put some needful effort to crack at least. 80% of the questions, right? Okay, so that should be our strategy. So, don't be hesitant, show your needful participation. Why? Because you have, as I told you already, you have 60% of the marks from verbal side, only 40% comes from math side. Okay, math may look sort of interesting to you. The various topics in quantitative aptitude may, you know, may look like more interesting for you. You may also do it as well, you know, you know, also, but the percentage of mark is only 40%. So make sure that you put more effort on the verbal side. That's really important. Okay. And especially on the reading side, reading comprehension and the business analysis side. In your reading comprehension, if you feel like so dull, think about the business analysis part. You know, you would have seen the previous question papers also. In business analysis part, you will be having what? Two or three pages of paragraphs, if I'm not wrong. Right? So, you'll be having big, big, lengthy paragraphs. You need to completely go through it. Analyze it. It's really important. That's what the term, it's been clearly mentioned. So, they'll be talking about the business oriented, uh, you know, discussion here. So, we need to completely analyze it and go for a proper uh, you know conclusion so definitely business analysis way comparably more vague than this one okay so kindly make sure you do show the needful participation so far this one what 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 is the right answer john m kane is was Advocate of which of the following suggestions? So you have four options here. Spending money recklessly during recession is suicidal. Exorbitant spending during recessions is likely to boost economy. Aggressive deficit spending is likely to be fatal for economic meltdown. Government stimulus economy may not help because of red tapestry. So we have four points here. Hardly if you if you want to summarize, I would take you to the you know take you to the paragraph here. You can quickly have a brush up and come. So, what John M. Keynes is talking about? It's been mentioned in the paragraph that Keynes had the radical idea that throwing money at recessions through aggressive deficit spending would re flat flatlined economies. Okay, so definitely he tries to mean that this implies that Keynes was of the opinion that economies facing a recession can be saved by pumping money into the economy. Okay, so definitely I would say the most flexible option for the second question should be exorbitant spending during recessions. It's likely to boost economy. 
in the country okay you get it so option two will be the most appropriate answer for the given question is that clear kindly give me a thumbs up guys if you're really clear with this come on we'll go for the next one yeah so the next one which of the following is true about Keynes philosophy come on So about Keynes philosophy, you try to go for the four options here. So first one, actual spending money during meltdown is more important than where and on what it is spent. Okay. So here the term meltdown, here they are talking about the meltdown in the economy, which is nothing but economy which which is sort of attaining a recession or which is coming you know which is falling down that's what they are mentioning here okay and the government should be selective in approach for spending money during recession okay and uh, filling old bottles with banknotes and burying them is an atrocious proposal and creating jobs and prosperity during recessions is almost an impracticable proposal So flexibly, what will be the right option for this? For those who have not seen the para again, I'll just really quickly take you to this. Come on. So what probably will be the answer? As he always says that. Here you can again refer to the I know um, line that has been underlined here. So Keynes had the radical idea of throwing money at recession through aggressive deficit spending would be resuscitate flat line economies. And he wasn't too particular about where the money was thrown. Yeah, he's just simply telling you the idea of throwing money at recession, which means spending too much of money at recession. And he was not very specific about where the money was thrown, right? So this shows Beyond doubt that the philosophy of Keynes that I advocated that there had be you know, there had to be no selection as to where the money should be spent. Okay, so if that is the case, then I would say for the third one, actual spending money during meltdown is more important than where and on, you know where and on it what it is spent. Again, it's going to be option one of this one. You're getting this simple nothing to complicate if you see the rest of three nowhere he talks about the philosophy of these so he is continuously insisting that you need to spend money you need to pump in money into the economy when the economy is under severe recession that's what he is talking about and that's what his philosophy is all about okay so go for the next one guys come on that is what according to Keynes is the aggregate demand and if I get any of the answers in the live chat I will be most happiest come on kindly do show the needful participation see the answer come on so the next one
So guys, here the next one, what according to the you know Keynes is the aggregate demand. So if you try to read out the given options, goods and service sectors, stimulation of short-term activity, tempting to rev up the sluggish economy, pumping one trillion dollars into economy. So if you see this, better if you try to rule out the options which is nowhere mentioned about Keynes with respect to the aggregate demand. So definitely, if you try to refer to the uh, you know passage here, <laughs> here. Keynes he called aggregate demand that is the more even economy will rev up the ethereal goods and services. So he is talking about the ethereal goods and services in general that called aggregate demand. So undoubtedly it's gonna be option one, right? So it's been according to Keynes, the aggregate demand is the goods and service sector. Okay, quickly next one. Obama desires to accelerate the process of pumping money with utmost rapidity as he believes that it would it would what out of the given three help create reasonably high employment opportunities avoid deflation inject cash into the already troubled economy okay So if you try to refer Obama, yes, then to speed is top priority because try to go for this. He talks about, he said, speed is a top priority because the faster Washington injects cash into the financial bloodstream, the better it stands to help avoid a multi-layer slump with a double-digit unemployment and deflation so definitely he, the main purpose of Obama is to get rid of unemployment and deflation right so that's what he's already main concerned about so undoubtedly it's gonna be option one that is A and B only okay nowhere it is mentioned that inject cash in the already troubled economy okay all good come on here we have the next passage kindly go for a quick read here come on go for it guys
Yeah, we'll go for the read. So let's try to pitch it, brush up the passage here. Come on, guys. Here they are talking about during the economic boom of the roaring 20s, the traditional values of rural America were challenged by the jazz age. The average American was busy with appliances. Those appliances were bought on grid or have made huge gains. 65% from the average work wages had only increased eight percent and it might be a rate of over 0.1% of the society earning goods on black duty to stock market depression was economic policy or so it's spread to the united states the rest of the world the last thing from the early 20s with banks failing businesses closing more than 15 million americans one part of the president of the crisis a passing incident in our national lives actually america and the united states strongly even drilled in a rugged into was blamed by me for the great pressure who was why did called how of and frank did not also interest on New York offered America a new deal. It was written in 1932. It the attack depression. Declaring a four day bank holiday, which was founded by the Banking Relief Act, stabilized the banking system. It was under the Indian groundwork for the new idea that would rescue the country from the outside. And the new deal program created a liberal political. Some farmers and others receiving government leaves and interfaces. It's not always affected Americans deeply. Since the providing attitude of the nine buddies was after the one, it was that failure was deserved. The other one brought on by the person being stopped. Men were hard hit, hard hit psychologically. And since men were expected to provide for their families, it was humiliating to have to ask for assistance. Although the argument that women did not even jobs, when many men were employed, the process of women being slightly to the female fields of technical services, we were doing it now. Children took on more responsibilities sometimes when their parents were born. 
assistant of doing this profession some people develop habits of capital saving and they are determined to improve the life for themselves so african americans suffered more than my sister the dogs were often taken away from them and given to whites in 1930s the people of black and white power john roosevelt championed black rights and this was continued in the south however as a result a large number of black people switched from the republican to the party the great depression and the new deal changed forever the relationship between american and government 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 and responsibility in caring for the needy and regulating the economy came to so this is what many people so here they are talking about the new deal plan which has been um you know established by the new deal be roosevelt and uh, how american were during the uh, you know early 1920s 1920s and 30s right now in india so how they actually uh, crashed and how they were into depression depression and how they were undermining those things okay so we need to completely summarize this you know my actually the question part and see how it works so what was the change in workers after mechanization of production so they mentioned the bargain on the workers after from the mechanization of production what is the biggest cause right the only risk because hold on a second fine so possibly the answer should be the wages increased by 8% that's going to be the option okay all good next one how was the wealth distributed in the society just before the great depression so the poor had more accumulated total wealth than the rich definitely not 0.2% of society earn the same total income as 42% whether it is 0.2 or 0.1 we will quickly go and infer from the given passage so it's going to be 0.1 of the society right with 0.1% of the society earning the same total income as 42% so undoubtedly it's going to be option Oh. right that is 0.1% of society earn the same total income as 42% okay before the great depression and next one what was president poor's attitude to the great depression whether he was serious casual humorous denial reproach definitely president poor was not serious He was absolutely casual, and he also stated that this crisis would end up within, you know, within sixty days. So he was super casual. So the answer is going to be option two, right? And which of the following sections of the American society were most affected by the Great Depression? So undoubtedly, it is. It is not the white. so it is actually the african americans right so african americans were greatly affected 50% of the black americans they lost their employment okay and which of these options was not part of the new deal proposed by frederick roosevelt formation of liberal labor unions government relief to farmers stabilizing the system transferring jobs from women to men and non discriminatory policies see if you see all the options this one this option was not part of the new deal policy proposed by franklin d roosevelt why because at that time depression women started working more women were into the teaching field women were into the societal uh, works and everything but the ideal policy of the new deal proposed by franklin d roosevelt 
he didn't propose the option of transferring jobs to women okay but all the other four he proposed it okay next what effects did the great depression have on the females in america their employment in the workforce increased okay that is to be true and they were fired from their jobs definitely not they were discriminated against they were repressed and pushed down they were the only ones to provide for their family so undoubtedly it's going to be option one that is their employment in the workforce increased other four options are sort of irrelevant to the given context so definitely we'll go for the next which of the following is most opposite in meaning to the word fragility as the given passage so first of all if you try to address the word given word fragility here exactly where it's being placed here it is so if you try to read out in the context of the given passage that is some people develop habits of careful saving and fragility others determined to create comfortable life for themselves so in reference to the exact place where it has been you know fixed if you try to go for a relevant meaning out of it they're talking about the opposite fragility means very cautious to be very saving So if you take the word frugality, frugality is the habit of carefully saving things. Carefully saving things and keeping it very precious. But if you try to find the opposite of the word frugality, you know that is characterized by the wasteful expenditures and spending a lot of excessive money unnecessarily so the word comes the most opposite in meaning is the word prodigality that is nothing but spending lavishly unnecessarily just for no use okay so it's going to be option four option four prodigality is the opposite of frugality right and which of the following comes closest in meaning to the word rugged given in the passage so let me find where it is exactly first. So rugged. I think it should be here. Yeah. A strong believer in rugged in this virus. Rugged is something. First of all, if you try to decode it. Rugged is something which we, which is very, very stubborn and the hearts in their attitude, right? So if that is the case, rugged in their individuality, if you try to find the closest meaning to it, enduring, accusing, jubilant, so it's going to be absolutely enduring, rugged, rugged if, you, if you try to see, rugged is something which is being very sturdy stubborn sort of and strong in constitution or construction so in context you know in context that is used here rugged individuality that is what has been mentioned right so one of the other meanings is rough or jagged right which is being very rough but it is used while referring to the surfaces which is not the case here so rugged means i would say in based on the contextual meaning it's going to be enduring Right? Enduring means surviving to the long extent. Right? Surviving the hardships. That's actually the, end, the meaning of enduring. Right? And next one, which of the following statements are false about the African Americans during the Great Depression? So when they were discriminated against in the South. They were most affected by the Great Depression. They experienced a period of flourishing wealth. They lost their jobs. It's based from revival, so absolutely it's going to be option three. 
they didn't experience a period of flourishing and they were devastated okay so definitely it's going to be option three for this and which of the following statements are true about the relationship of the u.s with the government after the depression so the government was now expected to regulate the economy the government became a didactic body u.s citizens became distrustful of the government all private sectors came under the government and none of the above so now absolutely it's going to be option one the government was now expected to regulate the economy all good yeah go for the next passage guys go for a read So, to try to go for a read. Much of the information we have today about chimpanzees comes from the groundbreaking long term research of the great con con conversation conversionist. Yeah, not conversionist, it's just conservationist. I'm really sorry. It's been wrongly pronounced. And Jane Goodall. Jane Goodall was born in England, London, England on April 3rd, 1934. On her second birthday, her father gave her a toy chimpanzee and named Jubilee. So Jubilee was named after a baby chimp in the London Zoo. 
and seem to foretell the scores Jane's life would take to this day. Jubilee sits in a chair and Jane's landed home. For an early age, Jane was fascinated by animals and sto animal stories. By the age of 10, she was talking about going to Africa to live among the animals there. At the time, in the early 1940s, this was a radical idea because women did not go to Africa by themselves. As a young woman, Jane finished the school in London, attended secretarial school and then worked for a documentary filmmaker for a while. When a school friend invited her to visit Kenya, she worked as a waitress until she had earned the fare to travel there by boat. She was 23 years old. Once in Kenya, she met Dr. Louis Leakey, a famous paleontologist and anthropologist. He was impressed with her thorough knowledge of Africa and its wildlife and hired her to assist him and his wife on a fossil hunting expedition to Dubai Coast. Dr. Leakey uh, you know, soon realized that Jane was the perfect person to complete his study. He had been planning for some time. She expressed her interest in the study of, you know, animals by living in the wild with them. Rather than studying dead animals through paleontology, Dr. Leake and Jane began planning a study of a group of chimpanzees who were living on the shores of Lake Tanganyika in Kenya. At first, the British authorities would not approve their plan at the time. They thought it was too dangerous for women to live in the wilds of Africa alone. But Jane's mother, Bane, agreed to join her so that she would not be alone. Finally, the authorities gave Jane the clearance she needed, she needed in order to go to Africa and begin her studies. In, nine, in July 1960, Jane and her mother arrived at Gombe National Park in what was called the real Tanganyika and now it is called Tanzania. So Jane faced many challenges as she began her work. Chimpanzees did not accept her right way and it took months for them to get used to her presence in their territory. But she was very patient and remained focused on her goal. Little by little, she was able to enter their world. At first, she was able to watch the chimpanzees only from a great distance using binoculars. As time passed, she was able to move her observation point closer to them while still using camouflage. Eventually, she was able to sit among them, touching, patting and even feeding them. It was an amazing uh, you know, accomplishment for Jane and a breakthrough in her study of animals in the wild. Jane named all the chimpanzees that study, stating in the journals that she felt they each had a unique personality. So one of the first significant observations that Jane made during the study with the chimpanzees, she felt each had a unique personality. One of the first significant observations that Jane made during the study with the chimpanzees make and use tools, much like humans do, to help them get food. It was previously thought humans alone use tools. Also, thanks to the genius research, we know that chimps eat meat as well as plants and fruits. In many ways, she had helped to see how chimpanzees and humans are similar. In doing so, she had made us more sympathetic towards these creatures while helping us to better understand ourselves. Studies dated by Jenny Goodall in 1960 is now the longest field study of any animal species in the natural habitat. Research continues to this day in Bombay and is conducted by a team of trained Tanzanians. Jane's life was included much more than just her study of the chimps in Tanzania. She pursued a graduate degree while still conducting her study, receiving her PhD from Cambridge in 1965. In 1984, she received the J. Paul Getty Wildlife Conservation Prize for helping millions of people understand the importance of wildlife conservation to her life on this planet. She has been married twice first to a photographer and then to a director of national parks. She has one son, Dr. Jenny Goodall, is now the world's most renowned authority on chimpanzees. Having studied their behavior for nearly 40 years, she has published many scientific articles, has written two books and now won numerous awards for her groundbreaking work. Jenny Goodall Institute for Wildlife Research, Education and Conservation was founded in 1977 in California, but moved into the Washington DC area in 1998, its goal is to take actions necessary to improve the environment for all living things. Dr. Goodall now travels extensively giving lectures, visiting zoos and chimp sanctuaries and talking to young people involved in environmental education. She is truly a great conservationist and an amazing human being. So it's all about uh, Jenny and her you know, life oriented towards environmental study. So the question part if you see, but she was very patient and remained focused on her goal. What is an antonym for the word focused? Very simple for that. It's been distracted. Antonym for the word focus, it is distracted, right? Next one. What is the author's purpose in writing this article? To entertain the reader with stories about chimpanzees, definitely not 
to inform the reader of the importance of wildlife conservation okay considered to warn the reader about the challenges of working in a ferry car to describe the work and life of jane goodall and to express jane goodall's life blog for wildlife so the most flexible one it could be undoubtedly it should be option two right So she is talking about more about Jerry Goodall. So to, to describe the work and you know life of Jerry Goodall, right? Yeah. Which of the following is not one of the reasons Dr. Lee chose Jerry to work with him? So she knew a lot about Africa. She knew a lot about African wildlife. She earned money to travel, and she was interested in studying in the wild. So they are asking which of the following is not one of the reasons. It's something related with the money, right? So she earned money to travel to Africa to her home, by her own. Right? And which of the following is not true of chimpanzees? Chimpanzees are often comfortable with strangers, right? Wait, no. Chimpanzees eat milk as well as plant foods. That happens to be the true one. Yeah, is that the case? 